Hello, this is the assembly video for Phoenix Props, The Light, the lightsaber based on Ben Solo from The, uh, the Last Jedi. So this is what you're going to get when you open your shipping box. Very easy to open the box. Just grab the sides a little bit, pull it open. You then have a box with a lightsaber in it. It has several little packets in here, and then the primary saber, and then the central pouch. Let's go ahead and take everything out of here. Pull out the main saber. Several different bags. In each bag are the screws needed for those pieces. have a few little goodies inside of the box maybe not all boxes are going to get these if you're lucky maybe you got a gold coin display plaque base for the display. Another card. And then a tool. There are actually two tools in this kit. There's a long one and a short one. All the bolts that are on here are connected via these two different Allen keys that you get as part of your kit. So put this to the side and get it out of the way. Okay, now first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the three bolts that hold the saber together. Put these to the side. One, two, three. Once this is done, you're able to separate the saber. You have the main body, the shroud, and the core. What you have here on the bottom is also the lower core. You may unscrew this if you'd like. You don't need to. End cap. And the core inside. You need to get that out by sticking your finger in the hole and unscrewing it. It shouldn't be in there very tight. If it is, you just kind of have to get at it and get it done. You see the core here. It only goes in one way and it is very required to hold the saber together. The sabers are already assembled, so you don't need to do this, but you can. These fins will separate as you like. Pay very special attention because if you turn this, your end cap is going to end up at a different position. So whenever you put everything back together, what you want to first do is thread on your end cap. And you want to look here, the end cap has a U shape. This goes on in a very specific way. So you're going to want to make sure it's properly aligned. And then put it in together so you end up with a proper alignment. Because if you take this out and you spin it, then it's just going to be that your end cap will be off center. But that's easily fixed now that you know what to do. Again, these are already assembled, no need to take it out. This core also disassembles, but I really wouldn't suggest you do it, but you're taking your own chances when you do that. 
but it reassembled. It's not a problem. But this core is required to hold the these fins in. Stick your finger in there again. Twist it till it hits nice and tight. You don't have to get a wrench in there or anything. Just finger tight's good. Put your end cap back in. Come on. There you go. Okay. First thing we're going to do is your saber clip. It's a very easy way place to start. So you open the bag. Put these pieces off to the side. You open the bag and you're going to see a couple different things. You're going to see a big one and a small one. The difference is the big one is used for a functional saber clip. So if you have uh, ordered the saber clip in addition or you already have one of the Phoenix Prop saber clips, then you will most likely be using this one. If you're only going to display it, you want this one because the, the original prop has a very short standoff spacer. Whereas, and it's not functional because the clip will always bump into these spines on the back when it's coming off. That's where this piece comes into play, this taller one. So in this case, we're going to assemble it using the short one, basically the display version. You put the spacer down and you get your little brass clip. Your brass clip simply goes like this. You can see how it's supposed to go. The opening is supposed to go on the bottom, this opening here. And then you'll see two countersinks that tell you which side is up. You set it down. And because we're using the short standoff, you're going to use the short screws. Put it down in there. And you'll see in this bag came a very small Allen key. This one is only used for these screws. These are M2.5 screws. So you just go nice, nice and neatly thread this in. Finger tight. You know, this isn't a Hercules contest. You just need to uh, put some nice pressure on it and keep it closed. Same goes with the top one. Finger tight, good to go. Now, you have attached the saber clip. Step one. Now these long screws, the Allen key and the spacer can go back in the bag or you can throw them away. I don't know, no, don't do that. They go back in the bag and then you can put them back in the box to save for later because you never know what you're going to need later on. Put this back. Another bag you're going to see has these are my body screws. I'll move these out of the way. Keep the big long tool. You're going to need it continuously. Let's dump the second little bag here. You're going to see Two pieces here that look very similar. There is a difference though. You can see one has a little tiny detail here and one doesn't. Other than that, they're identical. Okay, you're gonna have the center groovy here. You're going to have two very short M3 screws and two long M3 screws. The two long ones go with this little twin greebly here and the two short ones go in here. Last but not least, you're going to have the little button. Okay. So we'll move our body to the side. First step, 
we are going to attach our two little block creepies. Okay. You're going to see that in the core are pre-drilled holes, pre-threaded, pre-drilled, all that good stuff. Boom, boom. Put it down like this. Um, actually, the one with the little greebly on it, you'll see here, you'll see the core. You have some details in the core. This area here is your switch block. This is where your switches go if you put electronics in there. So you want this one with the little greebly to go opposite that. It should be a completely blank face. Set that down like this. And then take one of the longer screws, set it in, take your long tool, just twist this in. Again, don't have to put them in super tight, goes in there pretty straightforward. Flip it over, second one goes down, remember, this one has no detail on it, and it is on the same side as this switch block is. Place the screw in. Tighten it down, a little bit of finger twist, done. Your parts are now added on, and the details start being created. You're also going to notice a little set screw right here. Let me pull some more light in. Uh, not too much light. Too much light. Okay, no, too much light. There we go. A little set screw here. This is for your blade retention. And insert this in there. Your blade plug is going to come out. Well, okay, not quite. There we go. It's a shine through blade plug, clear acrylic. In order to properly assemble this, you have this little piece of aluminum and a piece of acrylic. You're going to need to apply some glue to the inside, epoxy cement or two-part epoxy glue. Put a little bit of dab on the inside of that, put it down, let it dry. And you'll have your blade plug that'll shine through when you want to show it. Okay. So you may find that these screws that hold these blocks on, uh, some of them I've noticed are a little bit longer and they stick into the chamber very slightly. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to intersect with your blade plug. So you can see in this case, the blade plug is actually barely touching them. So you're going to need to pay attention. If your screws are slightly in the chamber, you're going to need to just file them down just the touch, just the edge of them or the very tip of that to, to keep it out of the chamber. Okay, blade plug to the side. We got our two blocks on here. I want you to notice this little greebly here. This is already put in. You don't need to put it in. However, it is press fitted in there. It's been hammered in there. It's a very ultra tight fit. Um, you're not going to get it out of there unless you really go at it. Um, but just so you know how that's held in there. If you need to pull it out for whatever reason, it is removable. Just not easily. Okay, so this core is now done for the moment. Next part is we have the shroud. So the shroud is going to go over the core. And now you can see why this one doesn't have the little greebly there because it's covered by this block. And this one is exposed. So that's how you know if you've done it right or wrong. The exposed one should have the additional detail. Okay. So, now the next step we have to do here on the shroud is we need to place this block on this location. You see you have a big hole, two little holes. You have two little holes threaded into here. Now this is the semi-tricky part of this whole thing. You're going to, have to take this little tiny screw and you're going to have to put it through one of these holes like so. 
Okay. And then you're going to want to place this block on top until it's until the screw and the hole are basically joined. You can see the screw sitting up. Now the next step is you need to screw this in. So you can experiment how you want to do it. I find it's easy to stick your finger in there and just give it a little quarter of a turn. Just keep turning for a bit. You'll be able to thread it if you work at it. it thread's pretty simple, pretty easy. Turn it until it doesn't want to turn anymore. And then at that point, you need your long wrench and you can stick it in. You'll see these slots along the side make a good place for the, for the wrench to go into so you can get a good turn at it. Get it in place and turn it. Goes from one side to the other. Again, these don't need to be super tight. So you don't need to wrench it down until it stops. This is aluminum. You will mess it up if you try to put too much pressure on it. So just get it nice and nice and comfortably tight. So you can see now that the block is now screwed in with one screw. Second screw now, same place. You got to fit it in there. Get it into the hole. I like to put it in like this and then flip it upside down so it holds itself in there. Now you see the second one in there. Same process as before. Put your finger on it. Give it small little quarter turns. You could even come at it from the back side. Small little quarter turns to get it the beginning of the threading done. Once you got that, again, into these little keys on the side and give it a few little turns until it's tight. Do not do it too hard. I can't stress that enough. That is not a guarantee warranty item. If you strip these threads, I cannot guarantee this piece. It's not going to strip just by looking at it, but if you really wrench them down, you're going to have troubles. Okay? You can see now I've got both my screws in, and this piece is now fixed on there nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Next step is the little, the little button. What you need to do is you just need to put a little bit of glue along the bottom edge, along the ring here. A little bit of epoxy glue like you used before. And then set it down into the hole. Twist it around to get it to seat right. Once it's in, it'll sit like so. And be glued down nice and nice. Okay. Now, we're almost done with the shroud. But there's still more details. That's the thing we love about these lightsabers is the amount of details. Open the next little bag. You're going to find in there the pill cage, as I like to call it. The pill itself, which is a silicone-based rubbery material. So a little bit stretchy and wiggly here, as you can see. You're going to have two switches, two tactile switches. You don't need to have these if you're not making electronics, but you can actually put them in there and it gives it a nice feeling to the activation switch, even if you don't have electronics. And then you have another little short M3 screw. Okay. So, a little rubber piece has two little posts and they match two little holes. So, in they go. Next, your cage is going to sit on top of this. And you're going to want to press it down a little bit because it needs to push through this little uh, rubber thing. Okay. So once you've got that done, you're going to want to take this little screw and do the same thing as before. We're going to put it in from 
facing upwards and then flip it upside down now this screw is a little bit tough because the design of the rubber pill inside you have to push this screw through that silicone material so you're going to want to get the little hex tool on there and you're going to want to push it down to get it through that and then keep turning and if you have any trouble what you want to do is you want to pull this apart and you're going to have to look at this little pill cage. You'll see in the very center. Change the light a little bit. The very center you can see this little kind of circular design. Now if there is a piece in that circular design, that just means it hasn't been taken out. So you just need to pull it out. It's just a little tiny piece that comes out. What that does now is now you have an actual hole that the screw can go through. Okay. So now we're back. Put it back down where it goes. You see now that the pill has a little actually opening. Put down the cage. Press down to get it to seat. Let me go back to our screw again. Get into the hole. Now your screw should go through that little rubber piece, but again it's going to take a little bit of finessing to get through, so push down on your key and give it little turns. It's going to feel like you're not actually making any progress, but believe me, you are. One little tiny thread at a time. Also try it from the other side using the slots to get a little more motion. I know this is frustrating, but these are the things we have to do to hide details and get the best connection possible. Almost there. And after a bit you can feel the screw will stop wiggling and actually be into threads. Nice and easy does it. start feeling it getting tight that's when you know that you're basically there don't overstrip it you may see that this little piece might be a little off-center or not quite straight so you just use your fingers to get it in place the bottom of this cage is actually curved like the shroud is on the top of the bottom so it's out of place, it just won't really fit right. Okay, now you have assembled your shroud. The next step, you'll be able to see inside of here, you'll see that the little pieces of rubber are sticking up. Those are what are gonna interact with the switch. So now, just because what you're going to do is you're going to put these little switches in. They fit in there nice and comfortably. Slide them in. They fit in nice and tight. You can see. Don't fall out. You want to just put those in there. They're both the same, so it's not a big deal which one you use. So now the next step 
What we're going to do is we're going to slide our shroud over. You're going to see this isn't the center where the switches are. It's actually like this. It's offset. Okay. Very easily just put these together. Nice and neat. Okay. Now, the next step is to take your base again. And I'm going to show you one thing. There is a cutout in this part. You can't make a mistake. It's keyed. And this cutout fits with this switch block. There is only one way that this piece fits together. And that is the correct way. There's a little bit of slack here. That's not a big deal. That's part of the design. The holes and the screws will make sure that this piece is make perfect alignment. So, take this back apart. Put the piece over. Now you can know that this key is going to be right in line with the pill cage and the pill. Put it right in. Okay, now it's in place. We have it basically assembled now. So the next step is to take and put your three screws back in. And this shroud will have a little bit of travel here, a little bit of movement. But it only fits in one exact place where the screws are. So you take one screw, set it down in there, get your tool, twist it in just a few. Don't really put it down tight yet. We want to make sure all the other screws are also properly aligned. Screw them down. One, two, and three. Do you have them all in? Just finger tight each one of them in turn. Oh. Just do one more round, make sure. Yep. Tight. 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 Now, your saber's going to be nice and solid, no wiggle. What you've done is you've created these switches here. I'm going to kill the light. Okay, so now, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little bit of action behind. So these little rubber pieces are now interacting with the switches underneath and giving you a little bit of tactile feeling. Even if you're not doing electronics, that's still nice to have it as something you can press on your display. Saver, nice and neat. Basically, assembled, except for one thing. You'll see you have another little bag. Some of the sabers will have these pieces already on, and some will have them all in a bag. If they're already on, you just want to pick them off with your finger now. Because they need to be glued down in order to be permanently fixed. Okay, so let's take a look here. You're going to have 11 of these little greedlies. It's proper to put them down. You'll see the detail here. It has these little slots. The slots always face down. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a little bit of glue to this peg here, to the sides of the peg. Just a little bit. It's not much. It's a very tight fit. Put the glue on, set it down, the peg goes in the hole, and as you, if you have glued it down, let it sit for, I mean, you can use super glue, you can use epoxy, whichever. Each of these is going to get their location around the body, six on the top, five on the bottom. Again, cuts going facing down on the bottom, glue a slight dab around the peg. Put the peg in the hole. Fits right in there, nice and tight. Glue them all the way around, five around the outside. And so now you can see the saber in its assembled state. Obviously we have some little pegs left because I'm not actually attaching them. Okay. Blade plug would then be inserted. And then now, 
you're not going to be able to see easily your blade retention. But if you look between this little vent here, you're going to see a little black screw hole and a screw head. That's your blade retention. All you're going to have to do here is go through the little hole, tighten it down to lock your blade in, loosen it up to let your blades, your blade or your blade plug slip out. Tighten this one down here. And now you have your finished lightsaber. The light saber lightsaber. One last thing to show is the display stand. It's going to come in two parts. Okay. You got a base and the plate. And they're going to look a little funky. That's a plastic covering you can you could just peel right off. Once you peel that off, the plate simply slots into this little slot here. It's a tight fit. So if it doesn't fit really good to start with, if it's too tight, just kind of work at it. It'll fit in there. And now you have your display plate. Sits like this to display your lightsaber. The light. That's it. Any questions, please feel free to send me an email uh, on my dday at phoenixprops.net or on my website at phoenixprops.net. This information is also on the box. On the back, you have my website address and then my Facebook site for Phoenix Props. I'm trying to put Phoenix Props in a lot of places so you can't really miss it. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.